Shalom, shalom, good morning, nearly gone, and the question is, what have we done with this first month? Did we prepare ourselves for the year to come? Yes, what did we do? And that's the only on. I mean, only you can answer that question when you stand before God, but I want to I wanna encourage you. You know, just as quickly as this month has gone by, so quickly this year will go on going by and, and and I want to encourage you don't let time slip through your fingers you know let's live today while we have today and do what we ought to do to build the kingdom of God sharing the gospel encourage each other love one another you know praying for one another be there for one another because it's just a moment and then all is gone and uh, yeah, we cannot believe it's already the end of this month. The, you know, it's just unthinkable how quickly time has passed by. Amen. But I greet you this morning in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what a privilege this morning to sit around the Word of God with you, sharing the Word with God, you know, God with you. And I just have this thing regarding a praying widow you know, um, in my heart. But before I'm starting, let's pray and we start this morning. Father, I thank you this morning for the word. I just submit myself, Lord. May the glory of God come upon us in a new way. May you fill us with a fresh anointing. May we know and understand, God, what you are doing in our lives at this time, in this season. I just believe there's so many confused people out there, Lord, that needs direction. Can you just give them that direction, Lord? But this morning, I just want to honor you. I glorify you, Lord. I know that our names are written in the book of life, and I know that you've called us for purpose. I pray that that purpose, Father, will come into fulfillment as we live every day. Whatever we're going through, Father, there's a purpose and you will bring us into that purpose so we can fulfill the, our godly purpose and calling that you have laid upon us. May you bless everyone this morning and the word of God in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Uh, Pastor Bertha, goeiemorgen, good morning, good morning. This morning I'm praying about, I'm speaking about a praying widow and I want to start, I just want to say, I believe there's many widows out there, you know, praying. Maybe they feel they, what they're doing for the kingdom of God is not much. But I'm telling you through your prayer, you are, it's like John the Baptist. He, he made way for Jesus to come. He was laying the foundation. And I'm telling you, even for the second coming, for what God is doing now, even in our time, I believe there are prayers that widows are praying, truly bringing down the glory of God. And I want to encourage those widows this morning. I want, to, I want to encourage you this morning. God is not done with you. God has got a plan and purpose for your life. And maybe you feel insignificant by praying there on your own. But just know one thing. God is seeing your heart. Hi, my darling wife. God is seeing what you are doing. I want to start with Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. I mean, widows is somebody that lost a husband. I mean, a father, a partner, you know, a grandfather. And many widows never, you know, they never got married again. Some of them may be only married for a short time. In a Huyamora, good morning. But I want to encourage the widows this morning. Know that your prayers is heard by God. Know that your prayers moving mountains. Know even amidst what you're going through, God truly use you amidst everything. And I'm starting reading in Romans chapter 828. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. To those who are the called are called according to His purpose. I want to tell you today, even in the beginning of this year, we are called for a purpose. 
whatever we're going through, whatever you are going through this morning, there's purpose, even it seems to be insignificant, even it seems not much. Sophia, good morning. The assurance of Romans 8.28 is simply this, God works painful circumstances together for good. If we we'll just love Him in the midst of our distress. You know, doesn't matter what we're going through, we hold on to the hope that God will work all things together for the good of whatever His purpose is. Amen? Let's, like I've said this morning, I'm talking about a praying widow. Let's go to Luke chapter 2, verse 36 to 38. And we see in this story a prophetess Anna, but also a widow. Let's read there from verse 36. And there was also a prophetess. We went so much young in Jakarta. Uh, hello, uh, we went. And there was also a prophetess Anna, the daughter of Peniel uh, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old, having lived with her husband seven years from her maidenhood. She was only married for seven years when the husband died. And as a widow, even for 84 years, she did not go out from the temple enclosure, but was worshipping night and day with fasting and prayer. What an example, especially for all the people. You know, what does God require for you in your old age? It's for you to seek in God, for praying and worshipping, because there's nothing that keeps you for coming into the presence of God. Here this widow, 84 years, I mean, uh, she was a widow for 84 years. I mean, she was only married seven years. So all her life she was a widow. But one thing, she did not go out from the temple enclosure. And I just think it speaks a lot about all the people today. Um, you know, many of them just wait to die. But there's such a purpose still in your life. You have such an anointing soul to pray and bring down the glory of God in the lives of people. And I want to encourage you. There's a strong, you know, um, thing about a praying person, especially an elderly person. She did not go out from the temple enclosure. Verse 38. And she too came up at the same hour and she re returned thanks to God. And talked of Jesus to all who were looking for the redemption, redemption, deliverance of Jerusalem. So what, what did she pray about? I mean, she prayed about redemption, deliverance of Jerusalem. She paved the way in the Spirit for Jesus' coming. I'm telling you, just as God is raising up widows and elderly people in their time and hour, with a hunger to pray, not to live, Leona Guiamora, there's a hunger and a searching in the heart of so many older people to pray, but pray prayers that can bring down the glory of God, preparing a way for the second coming. In Romans 8.28, you know what I've just said, God works everything good together for those who He loves. Amen. But in this, you know, widow's case, Anna, I mean, she was a widow, only married seven years, but 84 years she focused her life on, on praying, fasting, seeking God, praying for redemption of Jerusalem. Amen. So the Bible do not give us an idea what happened to her husband. We just know he died. She was a widow. And uh, apparently she, she never got married. We can say maybe she did not find another person or whatever the reason, the reality is, in the death of a husband, a prayer warrior was reborn, seeking God in everything, staying focused, you know, and praying for the redemption of Jerusalem. Sometimes in our sadness, there's things that God will work together to raise you up, even when you're just praying and interceding. Amen. Maybe they were, she would have liked to marry again. Maybe it, the Bible doesn't tell us. The only thing we know that she was a widow for, for so many years all her life. And you know, she probably would have liked to get married. Why do I say that? 
Because why do I say that? Because the life of a widow in that time were really difficult. They had no voice to speak. Because usually the husband will speak on behalf of the wife. But the moment the husband died, there's no voice. And when they struggled, there was not all the grants and things that people had. No. They were dependable, actually, on whatever the husband left. But this woman, even re regarding a situation, chose to seek and loving God with all that she had. Amen. I mean, maybe in the beginning when the husband died, you know, like many people when they go through bad stuff, getting angry to God. Maybe in the, in the early days, God, why did my husband have to die? Why he had to leave so early? Why do I have to be alone? I know that many widows also listening to this message know exactly, you know, the loneliness and the hardships and, you know, that they are facing. And... You know, for not even, you know, not remarrying. But instead of holding her questions and anger and bitterness, she gave herself to loving God. In the midst of her personal heartache, she just loved God. And that's what the Bible speaks about her. I mean, she's being written in the New Testament, being referring to. Slowly God's purpose began to unfold in her life and she accepted the calling of a prophetess. And I'm talking to you this morning. Maybe you, you don't know and you don't feel significant. I'm telling you, God is raising you up. That prayers that you pray will change the atmosphere. That prayers that you pray for churches and pastors and for the glory of God and the restoration of cities and nations, God hears that prayers. It's maybe you don't see the significance right now. But I want to encourage you. Keep on praying, seeking and loving Jesus. Amen. I say I believe Anna played a critical role of intercession in preparing the way for Jesus to be born in her day. She prayed him in and was given the joy of seeing him herself. Then we go to another word. There was also another time when God was seeking a widow, but he could not find a widow in amongst Israel himself. Let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 25, 26. But I, in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah. When the heavens were closed up for three years and six months, so that there came a great famine over all the land. And yet Elia was not sent to a single one of them. There were many widows in Israel, but Elia was not sent to one of them. But only to Sarapath in the country of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. God couldn't find a widow in Israel in the time of Elia when he wanted to visit the nation. Jesus said there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elia. Uh, good morning, good morning. But to none of them was Elia sent. Elia had to be sent to the home of a Gentile woman because there was no widow in Israel that he could trust. I'm speaking to widows especially this morning. Can God trust you with the burden of prayer and intercession that is burning on your heart? I mean, it's because of the fact that God trusts you, that you have this prayer burden, that you have this intercession burden, that you have this fasting burden, because it's in a time that prayer make way for the second coming of Jesus Christ, preparing a way for the children of God, just like in the time of, of John the Baptist. Amen. But in... Uh, on this day, God wanted to visit the nation again. And just like in the days of Elijah, he looked for a widow in Israel who would be available for his purposes. Listen, you were born for a time amidst the fact that maybe your husband died early. Or the fact that your husband died and you did not got remarried. And I also want to speak to people that maybe lost a spouse. Or, or maybe I want to speak even to people being divorced. People... Being, you know, live a life alone. You know, do not have a husband. But there's a pressuring purpose in your heart, praying and fasting. I'm 
speaking to you. God is laying that on your life because He trusts you. He knows you will pray. He knows you will rise up and He knows you will pave the way because you are chosen for a time like this, preparing a way in prayer and intercession. But many of the people, all the people who are praying today do not know or many of them do not understand why why is this burden on the head? I'm telling you this morning because God has placed a purpose in your heart. Amen. But in this time when he found Anna, he didn't have to go outside the nation. God needed a widow who would not be distracted with other valued pursuits, but would be able to devote herself fully to a God-ordained task of intercession. I'm speaking to people all the women that knows exactly what I'm speaking, you have this passion, this desire to pray and to fast and to intercede. God has called you for a time like this. You know you pray in the early hours in the morning. You know God can trust you. But God has, you know, He knows you can devote yourself completely for the task that God... I just want to encourage you. Those women this morning, I want to tell you, God sees your heart. Maybe you feel you don't have a significant ministry, but I'm telling you, just like Anna, God has called you as an intercession amidst of the fact that there's no husband or no man in your life. Amen. God prepared Anna to be that widow. When her husband died, I believe God was asking Anna, Will you be that widow? Like the time of Elia, the one that can look after the prophet. But he could not find one in his own in Israel, but he had to look outside. And then he find this widow in Sarapat, the chosen one that could help or could feed Elia. The same thing. There's a calling on widows in this time and hour. And what you're feeling in your heart is a prayer. You know, it's this prayer pressure that God calls you as an intercession. Amen. Probably God said to Anna, you know, will you be that widow in this hour? Prepare the way for the Messiah through intercession. I want to tell you, your prayer is not insignificant. Your prayer is, is, is powerful in preparing what God is doing right now. Amen. But just loving God through her pain, Anna qualified as the candidate for the sacred role. You know, she prayed and she continued to vote herself 24-7 truly, basically for God. When Joseph and Mary presented Jesus to the Lord in the temple, Anna got to see the answers of her prayer. Can you imagine she praying for 84 years, waiting that the, the deliverance of Jerusalem, of Israel will happen. That salvation will come. And here Mary and her old age and Joseph present Jesus in the temple. And she just know, this is what I was praying for. The coming of the Messiah. I've seen it with my own eyes. I mean, in Luke chapter 2 verse 38, it says, and coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Jerusalem. Amen. What great honor she knew. Her tragedy for not having a husband, not having a man in her life. You know, God changed and it turned it into triumph. She got to behold the, and praise the hope of Israel. Anna's life illustrates the truth of Romans 8.28. The key to turning tragedy, tragedy into triumph is by loving God through it all. Amen. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us. That we should be called children of God. Romans 8.35. Who shall separate? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? I want you to tell this morning, speak to the devil and say, Be gone, Satan, whatever tribulation, it will not separate my, you know, me from God. Distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Verse 36, and it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. 
We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Amen. Leo na goeie more. Goeie more. I'm just reading quickly what you say. Amen. You know, God is calling a woman in prayer. I'm telling you, in the midst of your situation, maybe you feel barrenness. And you know, I want to tell you this morning, God is calling you into prayer and intercession. Maybe you cannot be in front of the church, but understand there's an anointing on your prayer that shake the heavens, preparing the way for God for the second coming of Jesus. And maybe you say, well, maybe not. Well, Anna prayed. She continued. God chose her as the widow for the time, preparing a way for salvation and redemption. You know, for, for, for in, in Jerusalem. And yet she saw that. I want you to encourage the older people. I want to encourage you this morning. Listen, maybe you don't know your calling, but there's a prayer hunger. There's a prayer, if I say a presence, that just pushes you to pray in the, in the, in the strangest hours of night. You, because God has chosen you amidst of your loneliness, because He knows you will not be distracted because you will, you will pray with eagerness. You will pray with, with uprightness. You will pray with the love seeking more love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him, him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from, from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ. Romans 8 verse 39 Neither high I just read but let me read it again No height, no death, no anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. God wants to change uh, Israel, Sermatsiang, God wants to change your negative into a positive, into a blessing, your situation into a passion for Jesus. Amen. So once again, Romans 8.26, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession with us, for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. This morning I just want to encourage you. My word is not long this morning. I'm just speaking about two words God has chosen. But I know that God has chosen in this time and hour. All the people, all the women. Don't ask me the, the age. But I'm just saying mature women. Maybe you do not have a husband. Maybe you have a husband, but you feel barren. He do not share in the same things. He's not maybe being truly being touched by the Holy Spirit. I'm talking to widows that came through difficult times. I'm talking to people that maybe never got married. I'm telling you this, a, a, a seeking that God has chosen you for this hour. And Romans 8.28, where I've started with, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. God will bring your prayers into fulfillment. To those who are the call according to His purpose. We are called to love Jesus Christ. And I'm, I'm praying like Anna. She devoted the rest of her life preparing away for the Messiah Jesus to come. And you know what? She did saw Jesus. Maybe you do not understand the burdens of prayer you have in your heart. Maybe even in the strangest hours you struggle to sleep. You try to find out why can I not sleep. Stop trying to find out why you cannot sleep. But start praying. Even start interceding. Start speaking in tongues. Start releasing a word of life over the children over our schools, over our generation. Start releasing words of encouragement over people so they can be received. Start speaking life, you know, over so many things. Pastor Marius, good morning. Start speaking 
Even there in the way hours of the night, when other people sleeping, God has chosen you and pressed upon your heart. It's time for prayer. It's time to rise up and to start releasing the word of God over your town, over your children, over the families, over churches. We have so many young people being, you know, in, 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 in drugs and, and, and certain things, you know. God is looking for people, especially all the people that can devote their life to prayer and change the atmosphere. And I want to encourage you this morning. You know if this word is for you this morning because you received that, that urgency in your heart. You've received. It's like God is pushing you and you know you've been waking up different times of the night. And then you just lay there and you start to speak in tongues and you start to pray and you start to release it. I'm telling God is calling people, especially elderly people. In the Bible we see about two widows that lost their husband. Anna, I mean, she was only seven years married, but she devoted, she devoted her life. It says here in Luke 2.38, and she came, uh, let me just see where she is. Oh yeah, verse 37. And as a widow, even for 84 years, she did not go out from the temple enclosure, but was worshipping night and day with fasting and prayer. Listen, if God is pressing that on your heart, you as an elderly matured woman, because God knows prayer will make a way for the second coming. Anna prayed and prayed for redemption, deliverance of Jerusalem. And, she, and then Jesus, as the Messiah, was born. But for many years she devoted herself. And I'm telling you, this is in this hour, God is pressing it on elderly people to start praying, you know, for redemption, for deliverance. So that people can be saved, people can be set free, people can rise up, people can come into the fullness of glory of God. And I want to encourage you. I know God is speaking to you this morning. I want to pray for you that you will come to the understanding as the power of the anointing that's coming upon your life for this hour, like Anna. She devoted herself for prayer, worshiping, night and day, fasting for the redemption, deliverance of Jerusalem, for the deliverance of souls that they can come in and know that Jesus is truly the Son of God. I would like to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning. You've called and you've pressed on the hearts of, of mature women. Lord, I know the ones I'm speaking. Many of them are widows. Many of them never got married. Many of them even been divorced for many years. But I pray, God, that you will ignite in them, Father, this urgency to devote themselves in prayer and worship and fasting for the deliverance of people to be set free, Father, so they can receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Lord, raise them up in churches within the body of Christ. Father, make even the, in, the, in the strangest time of night that that burden, Father, will make them to pray because you can trust them. Because you know you've chosen them for this time and hour. And therefore I release a fresh anointing. Activate them. Raise them up right now. Make them to see the power of the calling that you have placed upon their lives right now in Jesus name. And therefore Lord I just pray that something right now will stir the gifts Lord. And, and that they will rise up and say I know I have the answer. Because of Jesus Christ. Because of the revelation of the Holy Spirit. To fall in love with Jesus more and more. I just thank you Holy Spirit. May the word touch the hearts and the minds of people. The ones needed to know. And may they be touched, renewed and being activated right now. And we glorify you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praying for you. Thank you for watching. Just know that Jesus loves you. Stand firm.
Listen, all things will work together because of His love for you. Amen? For His purpose. Don't let those things make you to focus on the wrong things. But press in, push in, and you will see the God of the heavens will ignite you like never before. Listen, this month is nearly gone. Maybe you've not done much, but it's time for you to start doing today. Don't wait any longer. We only have 11 months of this year left. Let's, let's buy out the time because it can be gone like this. Let's focus on today and do what we can today to build the kingdom of God. Sharing the gospel, praying for people, and may God change the hearts and the minds of people. Amen. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Share this with someone. But especially start encouraging the elderly people. Encourage them to pray. Because God has already chosen them for this time, this hour. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.